And we are back on the Madden 17 franchise mode, and this time is by popular demand. A little while ago, I ran a poll on Twitter asking you guys what team I should use in my next rebuild, and 47% of the voters thought I should go with the Tennessee Titans. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. Now keep in mind, it is pretty late in the game cycle to be starting a brand new franchise mode, especially with Madden 18 about to drop in about a month, but I figured this will be a good way to transition into Madden 18, and then we can decide whether we're gonna keep it rolling with the Titans or go with the new squad. Now, for those of you guys that are wondering, we're keeping the same exact settings as the Falcon series, so I'll be playing as the coach with the same slider set and the same difficulty on all Madden. Now, diving right into it, you guys, taking a look at the roster, and at first glance, the offense looks pretty good. I see a lot of 80s across the board, so that's definitely a good starting point for us. And what was the record for the Titans last year, you guys? I think they were pretty close to 500. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they might have gone 500 last year. But anyways, the offense looks like it's in good shape already. I really don't have to do too much. I am going to tweak a couple of things. However, I do want to bring in a dynamic, big-time playmaking wide receiver, as well as bring in some youth at the tight end position. But we'll come back to that in just a second. Now, taking a quick look at the defense, I can already tell you guys, this is where the majority of the work is going to go in for me. I can already tell you that Bryce McCain, Jason McCourty, Wesley Woodyard, and Brian Arakpo are all in the 30-year-old club, so they're all in the twilights of their careers, so we definitely have to get younger there. So it should be a pretty fun rebuild on defense. They're already running the 3-4 scheme, which is my preferred scheme in Madden anyway, so we're good there. And as always, you guys are always encouraged to drop me a comment below with any type of suggestions or recommendations on players, because honestly, you guys lob me ideas sometimes that I don't even think of, so go on ahead and do that for me, and we can get this rebuild underway. Now, like I said a moment ago, one of the major things that I want to focus on heading into this rebuild is trying to acquire a big time playmaking wide receiver. And I can't think of anyone better than Odell Beckham Jr. Of course, there's a couple of other names out there, but I think that Odell should be our guy. Now, I know he's going to be expensive, so we have to be prepared to pay that premium. Wow, I'll say that 10 times fast. So to get a major piece, we have to offer a major piece, and I'm offering DeMarco Murray. Now, they rejected that initial offer showing medium interest, and I'm looking at their needs. They need a left tackle, tight end, right outside linebacker, right tackle, and middle linebacker. And I've got an 80 overall tight end in Anthony Fasano that they're definitely interested in. So let's go ahead and submit this. And it's a little closer, so Anthony Fasano, DeMarco Murray, and something this should get this deal done. So what I decided to do was throw in a draft pick as a third round pick for this year's draft, and that got the deal done. So welcome to the squad, OBJ. And I know a lot of you guys are going to be questioning the trade of DeMarco so soon, but we've got Derrick Henry, so I think we'll be just fine at the running back position. Now the next move that I want to make as GM of the Titans is something that's just too obvious. I'm looking at a 29-year-old, 7-year veteran in Jason McCourty, still on the outside trying to cover the Antonio Browns and Odell Beckhams. Well, not Odell anymore since he's on our squad, but you guys know what I mean. He shouldn't be out there playing corner at this stage of his career. So I think it's a natural transition for him to take a few steps back and line up at that free safety spot. And sure enough, it was the right call. He went from a 79 overall corner to an 87 overall free safety. So that's the move that we're going to go with there. And we probably just extended his career a couple more seasons with the team. So now that we've got McCourty playing safety, we've got to fill that spot. And I think that Jalen Collins is a solid man-to-man -man corner that can step in and do just that. And on top of that, he's pretty young, so he's not going to be that expensive. The Falcons needed a right guard, so we tossed him our backup in like our fifth corner, and we were able to get the deal done. So Jalen Collins comes in and plugs right in at the starting corner spot, and I'm going to be looking toward the draft to bring in another corner in the offseason, but for now, McCain is just going to have to man the spot. Now, I figured the best way to do this since we are starting this series so late in the Madden 17 cycle is to simulate the first season. I really don't see the point in playing it, to be honest with you guys. So we're going to get to the offseason of year one, and then we can go through the free agency process and then the draft, and then we can pick up in season two with the gameplay. So simming ahead into the offseason, and oh, by the way, you guys, I'm not keeping track of stats or anything like that, but I will be doing it for season two since I'm actually going to be playing that season. Now, as you guys can see here, a lot of players regressed after season one. And I kind of expected that because a lot of these guys are 30 plus years old and some of them are even older than that. I think Matt Castle was 35 years old. So players declining at that age is obviously something that's going to happen. Moving on to free agency, this is where things get interesting because somehow the Kansas City Chiefs let Eric Berry get to free agency. You guys already know that's going to be my number one target as we kick things off. We have got to add Eric Berry to the squad. As for the other positions, there's really not much going on. I like to build my teams through the draft anyways, so I really don't put a lot of stock in the free agency unless there's a player like Eric Berry just sitting out there for me. I'll usually just pick up a couple of pieces and then move right on into the draft. 
But hold on, the Falcons let Turbo get to free agency? We might have to go back and add Taylor Gabriel as well because he could be a nightmare lining up in the slot. Looking at offensive linemen here, I'm really just doing this to kind of show you guys what was available during free agency. I'm really not in the market to bring anybody in that's just going to sit on the bench. If I spend money in free agency, that player is going to be an impact player for me. And right now, I don't see any of those. And the exact same could be said for the defensive front. I don't see anybody that's going to come in and give us any type of productivity. So we're going to be looking to the draft to address a lot of these positions. So now that we got a decent idea of what's available in free agency and really what's not, we got to try to sign Eric Berry. I'm offering a four-year deal worth seven and a half million a year, along with the two and a half million dollar signing bonus, so it's roughly worth forty million dollars, and that should be enough to get the deal done. And he accepted the contract offer. So now we got to jump back into stage two of free agency and see if we can lock down Taylor Gabriel. Like I said, this man is going to be a monster coming out of the slot. Look at that, 93 speed, 86 catching, 95 acceleration. I'm telling you guys, between him and OBJ, defenses are really going to have to pick their poison. Now, another player I think we should offer a contract to is Sam Acho. This is really a depth signing because there's really nobody playing behind Brian Arakpo. The next best player is a 65 overall, so we definitely needed to bring somebody in. Now, the next player that we're going to offer a contract to is Luke Wilson. I'm telling you guys, I had no intentions to sign the tight end in free agency until I saw Luke Wilson's speed. 87 speed, he's got to be one of the faster tight ends in the game. So, of course, I'm going to offer him a contract and he accepted the offer. In fact, we ended up signing all four of our targets and for a team that really wasn't looking to do too much in free agency, I think we made out all right. What do you guys think about the moves that we made so far? So after we made headlines by signing Eric Berry, the phone started ringing off the hook with trade offers for Jason McCourty. And to my surprise, teams were offering second round draft picks for him. I don't know what Detroit was thinking there. I personally wouldn't offer a second round draft pick for a 30 year old declining free safety. But San Diego's offering much more than that. They want to give me a second, fifth, and a seventh for him? I got to take this deal, you guys. So Jason McCourty is off packing his bags for sunny San Diego. Well, Los Angeles now, but for the sake of the video, San Diego. And before we move on to the draft, just a quick recap of the four player additions that we got in free agency. I kid you not, I think the top three are going to pay off huge for us. We're probably going to have one of the more potent offenses in the league next season. I can't wait to get started. But first, we have to take care of the draft. Now, going into the draft, we have two first round picks and they're pretty close to one another. We got pick number eight and pick number 11. And with one of those picks, I must draft a corner. I scouted every DB in the pool and there are only three with the first round grade that are worth drafting. And that's Trey Jones, Chauncey Applegate, Lavaris, and Impali. We have to get one of those guys because after the top three, there's a huge drop off in talent. So it's going to be interesting to see the way that things play out. But if corners aren't available when I draft, I do have sort of a backup plan, and that's to pick up an enforcer like a Cam Chancellor to play alongside Eric Berry. And I think that Antonio Ransom could fit that bill. He's projected to go in the middle of the first round, but if he's sitting there for me at eight, I might have to pull the trigger. So simming ahead, the Broncos had the seventh pick. They decided to go with the quarterback there. The Titans are officially on the clock, and it's time to make our selection. And believe it or not, two of our top three corners are still on the board, along with Antonio Ransom. So I had a pretty big decision to make. I could go with either Trey Jones or Lavaris at corner, a position that we desperately need to fill, by the way, or I could go with a guy that I think could be a once in a generation type player in Antonio Ransom. Just look at his combine report. First and 20 yard shuttle, first and three cone, first and vertical jump, plus he runs a 4-4-2-40. When you factor in all that with the guy's last name is Ransom, we've got to pull the trigger. And wow, we made the right call. There is no doubt about it. 80 overall, 90 speed, 82 tackle, 82 pursuit, 92 hit power. Antonio Ransom is going to be a beast back there with Eric Berry. Now that we've got the back end of our defense solidified, it's time to find some help at corner. The only problem is both corners that are available have a late round grade. I'm picking at number 11 right now. That's a little bit too high in my opinion. So we're going to try to trade down and pick up some additional assets and still grab our much needed corner later on in the round. I'm thinking trading down to around the 15 spot should do it. But as I go to trade for that pick, check out what happens. The Baltimore Ravens are not budging at all. I tried every possible trade scenario to entice them to trade that 15th overall pick and they just rejected every offer. So unfortunately, this deal is not going to happen, but I'm still showing you guys all the effort that I put into this trying to make it happen. It was just crazy. I probably spent a good 20 minutes trying to do this. 
So after all that, I just gave up on it and decided I'm just gonna take my guy. It doesn't matter if I get him at 15 or 11. We need a corner, so we're gonna take Lavaris. And it's a good pick. Not great, nothing spectacular, but he's gonna fit in really nicely playing alongside Jalen Collins. They're both over six feet tall. They're both really solid in man coverage, so it's gonna be interesting to see how things play out there. As for my third round pick, I'm thinking middle linebacker here trying to get younger. Wesley Woodyard is getting up there in age, so it's time for us to start thinking about his eventual replacement. Moving on to my fourth round pick, I decided to go with the right guard, Jordan Jeremy, and this is a really solid pick that may eventually be our starter, because if I remember correctly, Chance Warmack's run block and pass block aren't really that great, so we just may have added a starter in the fourth round. In the fifth round, we added right outside linebacker Devin Creer, just to give us a little bit more pass rushing depth. And then in the sixth round, we decided to go with the fullback Sean Reinhardt out of Penn State, and it turns out to be an excellent pick. Sean was the number 16th ranked player in true talent, and we got him at number 153. That was a pretty solid pick. So here's a quick draft recap for you guys. I'm gonna spare you guys the seventh round because I really didn't do much there. But overall, I'm pretty happy with everything I did in free agency as well as in the draft. What do you guys think? Go ahead and drop me a comment down below and let me know your thoughts. Anyways, you guys, that's all the time I got for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'm signing off and I'll see you in the next one.